welcome. On the behalf of the Chicago Public Library Team Services, in partnership with John Walt Foundation, we have graphic design with YIMP by Deja and Ambie Lyrics with John Walt Foundation. YIMP is a free program you can download and is a great first step into graphic design. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Adeja Bryant, and today I'll be teaching graphic design using GIMP. I am a first year college student. Well, naturally, I'm going into my second year. I am a graphic design major and at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design, and I am also a first year recipient of the John Walsh Foundation Scholarship, where they helped me really kickstart my career and really figure out what I want to do, and I will forever love them for that. But today we're going to be teaching graphic design using GIMP. GIMP is a really simple, well, not really simple, but a great useful photo editing slash just graphic design app to kind of kickstart off your graphic design needs. So for me, I use it a lot during high school where I didn't have the access to Adobe Suite all the time because Adobe Suite is expensive and this is completely free and a really great alternative to Photoshop. So I'm going to kind of just hop right into it and start sharing my screen. First, we're going to start off by going over to Unsplash, which is a great website to get free photos. Um, when you get the free photos, you can also choose to credit the artist and you can follow different ones and look at their collection of photos that you can use and edit for completely for free. Over here, I always ha already have GIMP open, but I'm going to start a new one to show you what I did. So you can create a new right now. Mine is in pixels, but you can change it. And I like to keep mine in inches because that's just what I understand better. And so I'm going to be making this a five by five square. And here we have our square. Over here we have our tool options, how to edit each tool. And over here are our layers. Layers are very essential to this app because you can't really edit on like different things onto different layers. So let's say I make a layer right now and I'm going to call this one paint because we're gonna use the paintbrush. And I'm gonna keep the background as transparency. And I'm going to create that layer and I'm going to go over to the paintbrush. Over here, you can choose what type of brush you wanna use. So they have, I like the pepper one and I really like this one. It is my favorite and you can just kinda paint all over with it and you can go to over here get this bell pepper and kind of use it as a stamp as well i think the bell pepper is just so cute but um those are the two brushes that we have and over here we have the eraser so let's say i need to erase all of that just go in there but with layers is what you want to work with because you want to be able to move each object singularly because sometimes you mess up and you can't always just click backspace to get rid of things. So let's go over back to the brush and I'm going to write out, let's put GIMP. Um, like look how pretty that is, I love it. And so because I did it on that layer, I can click on the move tool and I can move the background because I clicked on the background and then this can stay right there or I can move the drawing. So you have to go to each layer to move each thing basically. So I'm gonna go back to the background and move that back into place. One of the favorite tools I like to use is the brush tool because of how cute and different that each design is. They have little star ones use them like little stamps and they have just a bunch of different ones there's this one I don't even know how to explain it it's just kind of little bubbly texture you can layer it. it looks really cool then we have more the GIMP logo itself which I think is hilarious look at how cute it is it has little soccer plants in his mouth um so yeah Oh, look, it's a little different things in his mouth each time. He's got a little bell pepper, a little paintbrush. Um, and of course, like I said, my favorite. And you can use that a lot. Another useful tool is the, you can also use pencil, airbrush, and ink. 
So let's go to pencil. Gives you a kind of a thinner, more thick line, as you can tell the difference in the way they look. Then we have airbrush. Airbrush is kind of more faint and you can kind of control the faintness of it by how long you click. Then finally we have ink. And that one is just gonna give you a very straight line. You can't really change how this one looks, which I don't use it very often. You can choose if you want to make it like different photo modes. And with those, I don't really know how to explain them. They are different ways that they are viewed, I guess you can say. So right now I have it in Dodge, so it will do, it's doing something very faint if you can see it right there. But yeah, that is that basically. And then over here, of course, is the eraser tool. And I'm gonna use, you can change that by shape too. So I can erase a bunch of different bell peppers into there. And just go right with that. I did this on the background there, by the way, which is why GIMP is still there. So that's another example of why layers are so important. And I can go here and erase this one. I'm going to go back to the paintbrush tool because there's something else I wanna show you. And that is the blur tool. I'm gonna keep it on the pepper. I'm gonna add a new layer, transparent. I'm going to zoom in. I'm gonna show you what the smudge tool does. We're gonna go back to this layer. And the smudge tool kind of smudges it out so that it is very faint and can kind of blend in with this color surrounding it. This will be really good if you're trying to like digitally, digitally draw using GIMP. It'll help you kind of blend the colors together better. I like how it works. It does a pretty good job. Um, we're going to go to the sparkle one. You can choose again different brushes for this one as well. Um, another thing you can do with GIMP is add text. So I'm going to have on this paint one layer. I'm actually going to change the name and I'm going to change that name to text. And using that layer, also the eyes over here will make your layers visible and invisible. But we're going to keep that visible just because it doesn't matter. Over here we have this. And with your fonts, you can choose different fonts over here. I'm gonna type out something so I can show you a few examples and yeah. Ooh, I did not mean to do that. I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna type Kim. Right here is where I can change the Font size, I'm gonna put it to like, I'm gonna change it from pixels because again, I understand inches and we're gonna change it to three inches. Press enter. And that's too big. Um, we're gonna change it to one inch. In that case, I'm gonna go back. Now I'll change it to one so I can do it from the beginning and make that go, yep. With that, you can change the way the font looks. So let's grab the whole thing. And I will go through the different fonts in which each one looks like. I like that one. Um, I like to go for a more bold one, so we're gonna just go with that one, the basic generic one. And from here, you can do a few things. And one of those things is to add different tools. So for here, we're gonna go with the We're gonna go over here to text tools. Ooh. 
here it is. Drop something. We're going to go over to filters. And we're going to go to light in shadow. And we're going to add a drop shadow. From here, you can kind of go up and down with where you want it to be. Press the X and axis. Color black. You can change the color to like a pinkish color if you want your drop shadow to be that color. I'm going to make mine more yellow so you can see it. Press OK. Um, you can adjust it here opacity so you can turn up the opacity or down let's say if i turn it up it'll be more apparent as you can see you can turn it back down and this can move it up and down depending on what you want to do or back like this it's moving it farther back and then this would move it farther up and yeah you could click the preview over here which i suggest so you can see what's going on as you do it so I find this a very useful thing in GIMP, which is just editing stuff like that. Other things that you can do in GIMP is they have a bunch of different filters. I love using noise. Um, noise is like how grainy a piece is, so it can kind of give it a vintage look if you really want to use it. I want to use, so right here you can already see it's already starting to do its thing. I really like to use noise. You should be doing these on different layers by the way makes it a lot simpler but yeah so i like to use that a lot we're going to click on this again i'm going to show a few of my favorite filters to use because not nah, um you can cartoon make something look like a cartoony style give it a soft glow which i think is really pretty um <laughs> so we're going to do this soft glow turn the brightness up for it And that's another filter that you can do. You can go to, back to the artistic ones, of course. And let's go with Clothify. That's another thing to do. So that can make it look like cloth, but I feel like I have too many filters to kind of show that off right now. But yeah. Those are the different filters I like to use. I really love to use noise and the drop shadow. And I think it looks really cool. It looks really cool, right? Um, so those are some very useful things. I will go back to the brush over here. Maybe add a few more details on a different layer. So let's like add a little circle. I can smudge it out if I really want to give it a cool little motion blur effect. Go back to the brush tool. I need to use a different brush. And I'm going to use this one. Give these cool lines. Kind of just keep messing around with it, depending on what you want to do. You can change the color of what you're doing. So I'm going to go over here, do more. My favorite color is pink, so let's go with pink. And yeah, press OK. And that will change the color of whatever brush you're using. If you have a stylus pen, you can use, if you have a touch screen computer like I do, you can use that to draw on GIMP as well, which I really think is cool. I don't want to pull mine out right now because there's no way for me to show you, but it's really cool. Um, this will grab everything that you need and can be used for stuff like that. So that's fuzzy selection. Um, 
this is the crop tool so I can crop certain things, press enter and crop it to that size. If I wanna undo that, you can go there and undo whatever you just previously did. And the paint bucket tool, ah, gradient tool. So this is going from, depending on these two colors, so I have a red to green gradient tool right now. So we're going to go here, press that, enter, go here. If you have Photoshop, you know what this is. And that is basically me creating that gradient. Ooh, it won't let me unselect. Edit, undo, fuzzy select. This is good. Gradient. Under item visibility, under fuzzy slide. And so from there, I'm going to go back to the background and, no, we're not doing that. Um, I'm going to redo the gradient. So now it's going from pink to red on this page, which I think is really pretty. So if you can't see it, just zooming in right there so you can see it. And yeah, those are pretty much the basic things that I like to use a lot using GIMP. There's a lot of things you can do using this app. But right now we're just going over the basics of the usual tools. There's also the clone tool, actually. Let me hit on that one really quick, where you can, I'm going to go back to the basic brush. We're going to control click and clone some stuff on over. I'm going to increase the brush size so that it can grab more stuff to the Kemp layer. Click that. You control click and it'll basically bring it over to wherever this part is. So yeah, my computer won't show it right now. I think I put too many things on this layer, but yeah. I think that is another really important tool that you can use. But yeah, this is what I was able to come up with right now using GIMP. And we're going to go into the, you can save your piece, of course, photo that I downloaded. So I can show you guys how to photo edit using GIMP. So we're going to go over here to open. And I'm going to go to desktop and open this photo. Convert it so that I can put here, and we're going to go to image. On image, you can do different things like manage the colors and just you can scale the image, get it down to a printable size, crop the content, flatten the image, and then we go over here to colors, and this is where the party really starts. So this is color balance, and you can preview what you're doing. So let's say I want to increase cyan, so now that it's more of a red color. I can add more magenta, give it more of a blue color, take away more of the green. Now it's more pink. You kind of just play around with these and get whatever you want out of it. I think that looks really cool. And then you can go over here to color again. You can change the saturation. So I can make it a deeper color, like more bright, more vibrant. So I'm gonna do that just to show you guys that it how that works. You can go to the exposure so I can make it brighter or darker. So the black levels would be the shadows. So I'm heightening the shadows right now. And the exposure is the light. So let's heighten the light so you can see more of the other stuff. I think that looks pretty cool. We can also go to curves. When it comes to curves, to get a more even edit, a lot of people say you need more of an S shape, which is true. Any flat lines will give you some wild colors, but this is your curves. That is how you edit the lightness and darkness in a photo all at once. That looks really cool in my opinion. I like purple a lot. Um, so that is another thing. I'm going to just leave that there. 
And you can invert the colors if you want to. So now it's green instead of purple. I'm going to invert it again. Back to its normal linear invert also changes the colors, different ways to invert the colors, but I'm going to keep it the same. And shadows and highlights, brightness and contrast. Brightness, of course, bring more bright lights into it, darkness. Contrast would kind of differentiate the colors more, so I would do that. Basically, all of the color edits are how you can edit your photo and how it will turn out to look. So I did all of this on the same layer, but you would want to do it on different layers in case you don't like something. So let's start this entire thing over. So I'm going to open, open this one. Convert. We're going to exit out of that. Discard changes. Create a new layer. Paint, transparent, let's go to colors. And now you can edit on this and color temperature. You can make it for light. Ah, you can make it warmer or cooler toned. So I'm gonna do that. We're going to edit the saturation first. I'm gonna press okay. And I can turn this on and off so you can see the difference. Colors. Let's go to levels. No, not levels. We're going to go to curves. And I can take this up. Let's put it down. Let's make it a layer. But yeah, those are the different ways you can use GIMP from photo editing to just basic graphic design stuff. I hope this was helpful and that you got some new information that you need to know. And thank you. After this, we will have a talk with Ambi Lyric, who has, is a Chicago-based DJ and currently has a children's book app they make completely from their iPad, and it's completely amazing. Thank you. Hello, I have my first question. And my first question is how long did it take me to learn GIMP? And I would say probably like two, three months. Um, it's a lot of playing with it and you never really fully learn it all the way, but yeah, you kind of just keep playing around with it and figuring out what you're doing as time goes on. Second question I got. Um, how are you introduced to GIMP? I went to an arts high school and my friends used it. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll give it a try because I really wanted to kind of play in graphic design more. So it was a lot, yeah, it was a lot easier to just kind of download the free app and get to it like that. I used that one, Pixlr and PixArt, which I still use PixArt. <laughs> That's a phone app. Where can you find this program? You can Google GIMP and it'll be directly on their website and it's a free download for like Windows and Mac users. Um, some of my favorite artists and designers. Um, so, ooh, that's hard. I like a lot more painters, I'm not gonna lie, over graphic designers, which is hilarious, but I do like painting a lot. Um, there are companies that have particular graphic design stuff that I like, like I really like a lot of Nike ads and when Virgil Abloh didn't, um, when Virgil Abloh was, yeah, he, when he didn't design that Pop Smoke cover, I loved him. Um, but as for painters, I like a lot of Candy Wally. I like, I'm a very big Dega fan. He's a major, he's a bad person, but his paintings are amazing. 
What's your favorite piece you've made using GIMP? My favorite piece I've made using GIMP. Um, it was like a really long time ago. I made this specific piece. It, I found some pictures on Pinterest and then I like, it was like a black girl and she had these orange flowers in her hair and I put it on the back of a background with like a bunch of oranges and then I blurred her out and put some words over. I think it was like in moving color because I watched the show and I really loved that piece. Um, do I paint? Yes, I do paint. Um, I'm mainly a painter. Do I have any paintings nearby? I might have a painting nearby. Um, yes, I do. I have one in my corner over here. I'm gonna get up and grab it. These are my recent paintings. My style has changed a teeny bit, but I almost dropped my computer. This is one of them. Did this a little while ago. Love this painting so much. I've changed a very bright, colorful style. Um, it cannot be used on web browsers, sadly. It's one that you have to download, but it doesn't take long to download at all. So that's pretty cool. Getting familiar with the software. Um, considering I was working with Adobe on my school computer is not long because I was kind of already adjusted to using it. But when you first get it, it, I would say it could take about a week if I was to try to kind of read it. Beyond this one, there are a few tutorials. Um, I'm going to look them up right now. Well, yeah. Um, so as for tutorials, there is one called GIMP in less than 10 minutes, and it's by Davius Media Design. Learn GIMP in 30 minutes, and that's by Chris Tutorials, and those are two that I've watched multiple times. You can remove a background from an image using GIMP. GIMP has a pen tool. If you use Photoshop, it's the same way, and you can just kind of like mark out what you want to either remove, and then you can take it out that way. Do I like drawing anime? <laughs> You can see my wall. I didn't do any of these. I went to a convention and I loved it. And my friend drew me this one. It's a little diva. It's really cool. And I love diva, as you can tell. Um, I don't draw anime, though. I wish I could. For some reason, that is a lot harder for me than like classical drawing. I don't know why. I think it's more stylized, and that's why and I like to just go based off of real life stuff more because I can kind of see how it moves. Anime for some reason is so hard to me. I don't know why. <laughs> so yeah.
Hello. And then now we have Ambi, who recently came out with a children's book using their iPad. And they're also a DJ and Chicago native and very talented. And yes, thank you. My name is uh, Missouri native. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, but I graduated from Columbia College, Chicago um, in 2013. And uh, I have a double major in early child education, audio engineering, and I have a um, But um, I was given my iPad probably about like two years ago from Apple. I did like the, one of their Today at Apple events, and they gave me the iPad, and I'm, I just knew that like I always wanted to make a, a children's book. So I just started drawing, you know, figuring out how to use I'm not a super expert at it, but I mean, I could show you. Uh, I could show you what I have so far. Uh, sorry if y'all getting feedback. I, I don't hear it, so I don't know how to stop it. Um, so basically, like I usually put like um, some type of reference picture in the corner, I guess, depending on like what it is that I'm drawing or um, uh, what it is that I'm drawing or um, like my ideas. So I guess this is like the prototype of my bear. My cousin Cameron Williams, who's also a graphic designer, he helped me like, create the bear based off of like the tattoo that I had, but I just knew that like I wanted to create something to like so enough of that. I'll, I'll just start drawing. Um, so usually like over here you'll have like I guess your slides and different layers that you're using um, and the ones that like you want to add. Uh, this is like your color wheel. So if you click on this little circle with the black in between, like you can find different colors that you want to use. And I'm using a, an Apple pencil. Like I think it's called like a stylus. Um, so I use that to like change my color. Um, if the color isn't on the the color wheel, you can click this little box right here to the left. I don't know if you guys can see me moving this up and down. Um, this little box underneath here, you can drag it to like find the color of your picture. That way it matches like skin tones or whatever, like shadows or whatever it is that you want to use. And like, as you saw, like that little circle up in the corner will change into that color that you want to use. And you just start drawing. Um, you can pick your pencils here. Uh, I have all of the stock pencils. Um, I like the ones that Apple provide. They work out pretty well for me. Um, I usually use the airbrushing um, tool. I like the airbrush. I used to airbrush t-shirts and shoes in high school as a, as a hobby. Um, so I don't know, I guess I can draw something for y'all or is that how this goes? Can I, can I draw something? <laughs> All right. Um, I don't really know what to draw. Hell, Miss Mom, you're going to have to stop texting me. Keep popping up on my screen. <laughs> Um, all right, so I guess I can kind of like draw a sketch of this bear a little bit. But even if like I was to like make a square or whatever the case may be, I could just drag this up and it'll fill in. But you got to make sure that like you use, that you completely close everything out and then it will do that. And then we have this, um, this tool right here that just turned blue. This is like your, your blending tool. So if you have like colors that you want to put together, you can like blend them together on here. I'm still learning Procreate, but I like it as I go. So I'm like, you can blend this in, you can make the blending bigger and kind of just like, you know, kind of create your own little picture, whatever it is that you want to do, I guess. Um, let me keep going. Um, also, like with this, you can click this arrow and you can also like warp your pictures so I can make this move. I 
it stretches out. I use this a lot with like letters more so than pictures, just because it can give you like the fish eye looking thing more so. Um, I don't know like the terms and stuff. So yeah. And then if you don't like what you did, you can take these two fingers and kind of tap onto your screen as many times as you can. Completely undo everything. If you don't want this white piece of paper or background there, you can just like click that and then it will take everything off. Um, I don't know, like what, what else y'all want me to teach y'all about it? Um, I think I pretty much went over everything as far as like what appropriate tools you can use and, and what you do. Um, yeah, so that's my TED talk. You guys want to uh, help me or chime back in, Deja? Or we could like uh, go back and forth as to how your techniques work or anything. Um, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? It took me about two and a half weeks straight. Like I literally just sat down for about two and a half weeks and made every drawing that I saw in my head. Okay. Uh, I pretty much, the alignment tools that I use to make my text is usually just based off of like, I used to airbrush a lot as a kid, so I just kind of freehand everything. So I don't really use any like templates or anything like that. I just kind of freehand everything. Yeah, color outside of the lines, always color outside of the lines. Like that's the best advice I can give you. Like, don't let anybody alter whatever picture it is that you want to make, make it. There's no such thing as an ugly drawing. There's no such thing as the wrong drawing. If you want to learn how to draw and you don't know how to draw, take a picture and flip it upside down. That way you're not so much focused on what the picture looks like, but more so just drawing as opposed to trying to make it look exactly like that person. That was like 
probably the best advice I ever got from my art teacher was just flip the pictures upside down. Every last one, I illustrated every last page in my book. I think it was a total of 26 pages, I would say, including the um, front and back cover. My inspiration for my bear character was the fact that, I don't know, I feel like I'm a bear. Like I'm always, I don't know, hibernating somewhere, trying to figure something out. Um, but I have tough skin like a bear, so it's like not too many things that I won't try to do. Even if I, you know, get knocked down, I'm gonna keep trying. Um, I just really like bears, I guess. My book, What I Want to Be, is based off of non-traditional careers. I feel like it's very important for us to teach um, ownership and entrepreneurship to our children. Uh, I feel that trades are pretty much frowned upon and like we are so caught in this systematic education system to where like we are okay with teaching our kids to work for somebody else as opposed to teaching them how to work for their own self or to provide a service. So I feel it's important at a young age for us to um, kind of teach that to our kids so that they understand that like it doesn't have to necessarily be somebody else's idea. It can be your own and you might not see money right away, but if you keep working at it eventually, like you're going to see the fruits of your labor. Uh, you can get my book at lilbluebear.com or you if you don't like the paper books or like physical copies you can get it at apple so it's available on apple's website as well all right bye y'all thank you for having me deja thank you john wall foundation and thank you um Chicago Public Public Libraries for having me as well too. So you for joining us to, this evening. Um, we had some great gems drop, great inspiration, greatness today. And I want to thank everyone who participated in the program and the John Wild Foundation. Come back next week for Songwriting with Saba at 5. And take time out of your day to use your voice and change the world. Sound off. Thank you.